Welcome to Diffuse Kangaroos. This is episode 59 of the American Muslim Experience. My name is Zaki Hassan, and I'm here with Pervez Ahmed. Hey, how's it going, Zaki? Uh, and I am super excited, not to say that I'm not very excited about the other, uh, all the other wonderful guests we have and the shows we do, but uh, this one, uh, I don't know, it's a little personal. feels a little personal. So uh, I guess without bearing the lead, this has become sort of an annual tradition, which is... Uh, Reflections on Star Wars, on the latest Star Wars uh, uh, edition. So here we are with Omar Muzaffar once again. Hello, welcome. Hey, Waikum Salam. Thank you, Omar, for joining us or rejoining us. Uh, I don't know how you feel, but this has kind of become uh, uh, kind of a tradition that we do here, uh, at yeah, least on our cool. show. I've got multiple messages I've gotten from people saying, are you going to do the Star Wars episode with Omar Muzaffar? <laughs> really? Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, people have been waiting for it. That's true. So pretty cool. And, and what I also like about the tradition is that the interview before and after me is something very serious about the Dean, and then you have me talking about Luke Skywalker. <laughs> hey, man. Well, if it's any cons- – I, I, well, I, little little solace, but I guess the last time we had you on the show, we, 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 we covered some heavy ground. So Yes, this is true. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, yes, the, the, the same Umar Muzaffar for those who listen and, 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 and catalog the show. Yeah. He's also uh, the the same Omar Muzaffar we have on every time there's a new uh, Star Wars outing. So um, anyway, I guess without further ado, uh, here we are to talk about the Last Jedi. Um, now, for our listeners, I wanted to also kind of cue everyone in that uh, all of us have had the benefit, I should say, or maybe not. I don't know where I mean, we 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 haven't all synced up, so it's going to be kind of an interesting conversation. Uh, but the benefit of having seen it more than once, which I know at least conversations, Zucky, you and I have had, we've almost sort of, um, we've come to the conclusion, one could say, that it, this is this is one of those, and, you know, maybe we say this about a lot of Star Wars films, but this one in particular is, uh, it, it deserves uh, multiple viewings to fully process everything. Yeah, it, I mean, it, it, as soon as it ended, um, I... I was like, I need to watch this again. I mean, that was my, my first thought. I was like, lots to process. I need to see it again. And that in and of itself, to me, is a testament of some kind to uh, what uh, Ryan Johnson accomplished as a writer-director for this film. Uh, I, I have many thoughts, but I will, uh, I will uh, uh, let, let you take the lead, Pervez, as we sort of journey through this latest Star Wars journey. Well, I guess what we always do, I mean, well, for one, warning... We're not going to, you know, this is going to be a spoiler-filled conversation. So obviously, if you have not seen the mo- movie, we aren't going to do any initial thoughts. We're going to go right into it. So if you haven't seen the movie, please, uh, or, and you don't, it, or I guess if you want to be spoiled, then please continue listening. But if you haven't seen it and don't want to be spoiled, then uh, shut us off and come back and come back and check it, check out the show later. So I'll start with you, Omer. Uh, initial thoughts. Uh, I enjoyed it immensely, and what's funny is that I was telling all my students how much I enjoyed it, and so they got extra excited to watch it to the point that one kid came to Juma dressed as a Jedi, so (laughs) I made him lead prayer, and he's been texting me ever since he watched it last night, including two minutes ago, with such lines as, what did you like about it? I don't think it was a bad movie, but I just didn't enjoy it like I thought I would. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so it didn't yeah. resonate with the young people yeah. as much as it perhaps re- resonated with us old geezers. Well, I I think well that's an interesting point, and I'm kind of glad you say that because I think one of the things we're seeing both in the online commentaries and conversations, uh, as well as uh, you know for those who follow Rotten Tomatoes and kind of can you, you can almost see the stark contrast between where the critics fall with this movie, uh, very high I should say in terms of yeah. their reviews. And where the audience is falling. And so it seems to be, and I remember Zucky saying this to me when I, because Zucky saw it, what, Monday? Zucky, yes. you saw it at a very an early press screening. Well, not yeah. very early as far as the rest of us go. Uh, the rest of us low, you know, um, the, you know, the <laughs> proli- proletariat. The, yeah. the normies. The working class. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So we saw it Thursday. And then Zucky, you and I had the privilege of seeing it again Thursday. And I think, Omar, you saw it Friday? I saw it uh, Thursday night. Oh. And then I saw it again about five hours ago. Okay, oh, wow. well, wow. wow, it's extremely fresh. It's extremely yeah. fresh, right? So, so what I'm trying to say is, it, it is a polar. I am seeing a very polarizing. Uh, I, that it, it is the, very polarizing. The, the credits come up, and I'm like, people are going to love it or hate it. Like, yeah. mm. I was like, I, as soon as it ended, I was like, I'm predicting the future, and and. Uh, 
th- that's been borne out in really interesting oh, yeah. ways because because the critical reaction has been uh, really I mean best yeah. ever you know just yeah, about. No. Um, however, just the, the now the cinema score is A's, which means that people who are going to see it seem to be enjoying it. But there is a uh, what I'm imagining is a very vocal minority online, um, or a vocal faction online who who is expressing their discontent uh, quite vociferously. And I think a lot of that comes from the way it um, it it changes what we've be- become conditioned to expect when we see the word star and wars next to each other on the screen. Mm, mm. Yeah, I know. I, I agree. And I, and I, I think, uh, you know, um, when I'm just make a quick point and then we'll go right into kind of, I think the direction where you, where you're wanting to take a Zucky, which is that, you know, it is polarizing and I don't think it's just polarizing among like, Oh, like inter demographics. So for example, Omer, to your point about your student and his reaction, uh, I'm seeing a lot of the fan base, like people like us, old quote unquote old geezers, like people who grew up with the franchise, uh, saw it in its original release uh, or or thereabouts. Um, I, I'm seeing it extremely polarizing, even among that demographic. So oh, that's fascinating. Not, oh yeah, yeah. It's not. I'm talking about people that I know that I grew up with and loving Star Wars and watching Star Wars films. Who 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 don't like it? Who are and and have and like Zucky said, have been kind of vocal on social media, or at least on as far as my social media, you know, uh, circle is uh, be kind of vocal in terms of their dis their discontent. Um, but Zucky, I think to your point and where you're going, um, yes, this is a very. I think it's safe to say this is a very very different Star Wars movie. It, it feels like the most. I mean, yeah, it, it's it's. It's unlike any Star Wars movie that I've seen, uh, and yet there are things about it that, upon further examination, to me at least, seem to be sort of quintessentially Star Wars. Uh, uh, you know, I, I think this is one of these things where, to some extent, we're not going to – we, 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 we are going to have to view the trilogy holistically before we can really uh, see to what extent uh, this really does break the mold because, I mean – if, well, yeah. if you know, uh, if if there's a massive amount of course correcting in the next one, then then this will stand more apart. But I think what we're seeing in this is, it's a repost to the critique that a lot of people had with the Force Awakens, which is a movie that I did not dislike, by the way. Uh, mm. But you know, the 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 refrain was, oh, it's we've seen all, oh, it's doing, oh, look, another mm. Death Star, oh, look, it's mm. another desert planet, oh, you know, all the, it's hitting those same beats, and mm. so. By virtue of that, the movie ends, and you're kind, you're kind of like writing the sequel in your head, and you're like, oh, it's going to be like The Empire Strikes Back, where it does this and this. Like, we're expecting that. And and the whole point of what I think Ryan Johnson is doing is saying all of those expectations that you have that have built up are, to some extent, weighing down this franchise. Mm-hmm. Because That's it's, a good way to put it. Yeah, you know, because... because it, it's 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 you're locked into this this repeating of of history like oh we got to do this and we got to do this and in movie three we're gonna see this this and this and and in this one it's like I think I think um, it's a recognition uh, I, I let me put it this way. like the the arc that that Luke Skywalker has it, to me I found it incredibly poignant mm-hmm. uh, a lot of people are are extremely upset about it and I get I that. loved it. Yeah, well, and, and but this is the thing. I I understand why they're upset because you you've lived with this character for thirty plus years. Yeah. Uh, in between Return of the Jedi and The Force Awakens, and so whether you followed the licensed fiction or whatever or not, you had an image of your mind of what Luke Skywalker has been up to in these mm-hmm. decades. And so here's here's Ray. She brings him this lightsaber, and it's the call to action. <laughs> and Joseph Campbell tells yep. us he's going to grab that lightsaber and he's going to. Mm-hmm. Just you know, he's going to kick all forms of butt. Well, that will come later, right? I it, mean, Joseph right. Campbell's first thing is the refusal of the call. Exactly, right? right? Yeah. But even yeah. then, the way the call is answered is a, yeah, awesome. is, is an inversion of expectation. So I, yeah. it, I'll be very honest and say it took, it didn't take a second viewing, but it took time to process for me to really appreciate. What appreciate. Yeah. 
Yeah, I agree. Oh, Omar, I want to hear from you. I, I don't want to because I, I have yeah, some sorry, I'm like, well. I'm, I, no, no, no. I, 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 <laughs> I'm having a good time listening. I uh, one thing that I loved about this film is that I was glued, but I could not tell you what was going to happen next. Yes. Yeah. Or every single time I had an opinion on what was going to happen next, it didn't happen. <laughs> exactly. Like that's that's yeah. a, a good movie. It, right. Exactly. I mean, there are so many unexpected moments in this in in this movie. Um, <laughs> Uh, and, and certainly, you know, uh, to Zucky's point, if you were expecting kind of the, you know, George Lucas and his poetry of where, you know, the, the number, the, the second of a trilogy and what should happen and what notes need to be hit, um, it, it takes that and it completely, it, 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 well, I think, to again, Zucky, you've, you've said this without saying this, but it, it deconstructs the entire yeah, you know the idea of a Star Wars uh, trilogy. Well, mm-hmm. see, let, let me it it, it yeah, deconstructs it, your yeah. expectations, and I think okay. that's I think yeah. that's a really key thing because what it's not doing is saying nothing that happened before counts anymore because of this mm-hmm. crazy revelation, right? Because mm-hmm. that I would have had a hard time with. Sure. Uh, it it instead what it says is that story was told and it's valid and it has it has weight. And resolution, and as we move on, we're going in these different directions. That doesn't undo anything we've seen before, but mm-hmm. it does say don't expect past to be prologue. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and to that point, I want to quickly say this because again, you know, we, we were talking about those judicious versus copious notes or, or whatever that I've <laughs> taken. One of the points that I did have, which was this idea, and Zucky, you and I, I remember after your second, my first viewing, we talked about this, which is. You know, there's a lot here where Ryan Johnson, the director, obviously is, is speaking almost. He's sort of he's almost sort of breaking the fourth wall, as it were, mm-hmm. and 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 speaking directly to the audience through characters. And I think that, you know, for example, the line from the trailer that Luke says, you know, which to me it, it serves as sort of the almost the tagline of the movie, yes, which is, this is not going to go the way you think. That's awesome. And, yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Right, right. And then I, quickly, real quick, because there's I think to me two other things. Is where that that it's and other examples of Ryan Johnson doing the same thing, which I think Kylo Ren says, which is let go of the past, kill it yeah. if you have to, right? Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. finally, which I think Zucky, where I thought what you were going to mention, or you did without mentioning it, which is, you know, we've got that epic, the epic scene where we are expecting the story to pick up, which is Ray handing Luke Skywalker his lightsaber, and then for the for, for those who follow the trilogy or the the saga, his father's. <laughs> lightsaber and what does he do he kind of throws it over he chucks it over his back and it, he, he doesn't even acknowledge, he doesn't acknowledge what it is he's not like hey my hand used to be attached to this thing <laughs> did, did you see the hand that came with it <laughs> yeah, i'd like that back yeah. yeah i'd like that back too um so i think right from the get-go because that happens what within the first 10 minutes arguably mm-hmm. uh it, it's it, it's a it's ryan johnson to me telling us again and again uh you know for those who would hear that hey this is going to be a very different star wars movie Mm -hmm. what do you think about i I totally agree i mean even symbolically that that moment after they kill snoke and they have the big fight with snoke's henchmen and then ray and and kylo ren are pulling for that lightsaber uh when they tear it apart i mean that's also a message like okay the lightsaber is not the center of the center of the story here it's not the um the icon that yeah. we in the audience have turned it into just as much as the characters. Exactly. That's a great point. That's a great point. And, uh, you know, well, I, I, again, my notes are not going to do us any good because they're not going to keep us on any kind of, like, you know, uh, <laughs> any I mean, kind I mean, of, like, know, it's, outline. Here's, but... It's so interesting right? because because when you think about it, even, like, it, we're like, okay, so I guess Luke isn't going to use it. We're kind of like... Ray is going to use Luke's lightsaber, and that's going to give it this mythical significance. It's like yeah. Excalibur, and yeah. even that is subverted. It is right. Yeah. What, it is. And and there's the moment where Ray is in you know the the, the cave, which is of course uh-huh. playing on on in the Empire Strikes Back, and she's looking uh-huh. through the mirror, and she just sees herself stretching into the distance and into the past. And when you look at it, it's why like she is the beginning of this of her own story. Yeah. Right. It's totally. so to that point to the whole. Star Wars and its allegory of the cave. Uh, how do you, how did you interpret that? Uh, that left me even befuddled, even after the second time seeing it. Like, mm-hmm. what? How do I fully interpret this? I, I mean, love to hear your thoughts, both of you. If, if we look at it through the through this lens that this whole film, like you guys are saying, is 
is setting up and yet taking down the uh, the past, right? You know, she's going in, and we're all waiting to find out if we're right about who her parents are, right? Yeah. Is her uh, are her parents Luke and Han, or, or Leia and Han? Is her, uh, is her dad Luke? Is her dad Obi Wan? All the different theories, right? Was she constructed by whatever that um, who is that Darth guy? Um, Cities. In, uh, the the one who who would create people, Plagueis. Plagueis. Yeah, Plagueis. Yeah, because I think that's what that was one of our theories when we had this conversation two years ago, right? You know, or you know, or is Snoke, you know, Plagueis, and and yeah, they threw it all out. It's like yeah, here's her, and and basically this whole deep deep philosophy, this yin and yang that's still present. Um, they basically said, well, yeah, we're gonna take this in a different direction, you know, perhaps. In the past, it was Luke who's his pure good and the Emperor who's pure bad. But now you have Rey who is good on the outside but has some darkness on the inside. And then and then Kylo Ren who has some who is dark on the outside but might still have some good on the inside. And that's much more like the yin and yang symbol, right? Mm, and mm. That, could be, that could be the direction we're taking things. But what's wonderful about this is that they haven't even given us, you know, enough of a hint to, to latch onto that now rather than pull the floor from, from underneath us. So I, I think, you know, you, you mentioned a few characters. And, I, you know, I, like one of the things I did when I was, again, trying to make sense of all the things I did want to cover was, I, you know, I was kind of like, okay, what are the, who are the major characters or minor uh, yeah. that, that, that have some, that are afforded some screen time and just kind of looking at them one by one. I mean, I think Snoke is probably the easiest one to kind of dispel with, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, uh, or dispense with, sorry, uh, because... There's not much. I mean, we don't. Yeah. We're, 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 there's no arc. There's no origin per se, backstory, uh, all, like you know. So we don't. We we may never know. We, yeah. we and, uh, and and when you think about it, I mean, the, does it matter? Snoke is a, is is a, a walking, talking red herring in both of these movies, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Because because what is he doing? He's he's doing like a Palpatine cover band, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You know, but I don't see. Here's the and this is and I want to save this for the end, but because we're going, I, because I think that J.J. Abrams introduced the character with at least some trajectory in mind. I think I, Ryan I, Johnson. But no, I I think that he introduced. Well, and I I can't speak to whether there was any. You know, ba- based on I, I said this on my earlier show that it it based on the creative. Handing off from one production to the next, it feels a yeah. little like like whose line is it anyway? <laughs> Where like Wayne Wayne Brady does this, and then hey, Ryan Style takes over and does this. You know, um, I don't think there's any synchronicity. However, th- this I think it ends up being synchronous because the thought that everyone had, even if they weren't saying it about Snoke, was well, like he just seems like another emperor. He's just the Emperor mm-hmm. 2.0, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and in which case, you say, all right, well, we've already gotten. The, the most iconic version of that. So what is this going to be but a comparison to that? So the only way to move the story forward is to take that trope and say, okay, what happens when, you know, the, the, the apprentice does take over, right? Mm-hmm. The, the emperor mm-hmm. had a plan. Uh, and and one assumes so did Snoke. Okay, but now Kylo Ren is the supreme leader and he's... He's he's taken over. He's in charge of the the first order. He's Trump as president, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? He's he's yeah. this insolent yeah. man baby who suddenly is in control of the universe. Well, we've never seen that before in this universe. Mm-hmm. What happens? Yeah, interesting, interesting. Yeah, because I think. Sorry, go ahead. I was I was going to push back and say I agree with Zucky, but in the way that uh, I'm a fellow Star Wars loser that this has become my way to rationalize it. <laughs> because when he when he was killed, I thought, oh man, another Darth Maul. Darth Maul comes, you know, starts out as this super interesting villain and then he just gets cut in half. Mm-hmm. Right? And Snoke, yeah, Snoke is in many ways a relic. He's he's also presenting himself or he is this character that is a relic of the old Star Wars universe. And it was easy to destroy him. But yes. supporting what you're saying... Uh, I I appreciated much more in the second viewing that Kylo Ren may not have been good in that moment where he where he kills him, yeah. you know, oh. to save. Um, I Ray. don't. 
Yeah, I don't yeah, think so at all. Yeah, yeah, that's how, that's how I saw it the first time. And oh, I, I see. Everybody, everybody yeah. in the theater was cheering both times I saw the film, and then the You're second right. viewing, I thought, oh no, he's been evil all along. Right, he's wanted to You're be right. the, the the leader. And this no, is you, where it subverts our expectations because we're like, yeah, oh, okay, it does. Uh, he's yeah. he's a good guy now. And then you and and I mean, look at how that whole sequence is a greatest hits version of the climax of Return of the Jedi. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. The, yeah. When when Kylo Ren brings her up in that elevator, it's yep. like framed and it's, shot exactly the same. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then oh, look at me destroying your fleet, and you know it's yep. all the same stuff. And yeah. what's the point of doing all that except to say, oh, you think we're going to be doing this? Actually, we're doing this. You, you, yeah, you do exactly, that deliberately, exactly. you know. But I think he, that was a scene that alienated a lot of people. Oh, a yeah. lot of people who don't like the film. I think. Uh, so what I'm saying is that I think the same point could have been made in a different way. Hmm. Meaning, I'm agreeing with you about the philosophy of that of that construction. Yeah. Uh, but I do think that it did turn off a lot of people, well, including the student who is still texting me right now as we talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny you say about turning off people and and how possibly it could have been done differently. Because another, I think, complaint that I'm seeing from a lot of audiences, and I remember even on the first viewing, I was. You know, I, I was I didn't know how I fully how I felt about it, and then on the second viewing, I enjoyed it a lot more. Or even after processing it the first time, which is which is something that happens prior to actually the the let's call it the throne room scene mm-hmm. uh, and Snoke's um, demise, which is the scene with Leia, right? Mm-hmm. And Leia, uh, what you think she that okay they killed her off like she she mm-hmm. died. There's this massive explosion, and you see uh, you know like an impact on her and. Then, then the scene, then it, it, like the scene switches over. So you're you're assuming that she's died, and yeah. okay, it makes sense. Carrie Fisher is no longer, and so this was one way to deal with the character. Yeah. And then we see that moment, right? Which obviously we all know what we're talking about, which is her in space, crystallized. She's doing, you know, Ashhadu la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu Muhammadur yeah, There you go. There is the finger. back to life. There is the <laughs> finger. I did notice that. Um, <laughs> she moves the finger, the shahud, and then um, no, but but you've got the crystallization and all that stuff in space, and then she. I don't know. People are describing it as like hovers or like a witch or like Superman or yeah. So <laughs> what did you? What, what were your thoughts, uh, Zucky, Umar, and both you guys? So I mean, it entertained me. It's like okay, she's dead. Yeah, she's supposed to die off one or the other. Oh, she's back to life. This is pretty cool. So it it had me intrigued as it was as it was moving along. You know. Okay. So and and I think I I agree with Umar uh, Zaki. I, and just all, all I wanted to add to what Umar said was, it again it subverts expectations because you almost think okay that's one way to kill the character she's dead, um, and then when they even when they did the whole. F- you know, uh, coming back to her body in space and in the stillness of space, I thought that was just maybe the filmmaker's way because she also looked kind of CGI to me. So I thought, you know, maybe this is the filmmaker's way of, uh, you know, like a tribute to her, with, uh, mm. just having her kind of go into the drift, you know, drift into the uh, empty of space. Um, mm-hmm. And then the unexpected happens, which again, right? So anyway, Zucky, what, what, what were your thoughts when you saw that? Well, okay, so so yeah, I think everyone who watched was like, oh, okay, so we just lost the princess. I get it. You know, I mean, that that's like your normal yeah. reaction if you know she's gone. Yeah. Um, and then I <laughs> I remember when, they, when we see her floating, I was like, okay, this seems a little excessive yeah. to me, but, you know. <laughs> Yeah, okay, yeah. you know, and then we see her moving, and and at that point, I was like, I had a couple oh. thoughts. I was like, oh, okay, cool. And then I thought, wow, we've never seen this from the Force, and That's right. and you know, she she is she's not flying. She she uses the Force to right. move herself. I mean, she's floating in space anyway to to um, an airlock. But it, it, the reaction to that has been very interesting because people are like we we've never seen that happen before in the Force, and I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah, but why are you saying? Yeah. We can't, like, why is why does uh, absence of evidence equal uh, you know <laughs> evidence of absence? You know, uh, like okay, that's that's uh, I I just take it at face value. I'm like okay, I guess you can do that with the force. Uh, did uh, did those people make the same complaint about Luke doing his uh, his own hologram thing? Well, that's I think I think that's one of the reasons some people don't like uh, that aspect of the ending. You know, mm-hmm. and, yeah. And I'm kind of yeah. I've said this online. I'm like, look. Based on what we saw in the original trilogy, we we had like a certain threshold for what Jedi powers entail, and then the first like ten minutes of the Phantom Menace, they're like zipping around, zipping with around, super speed, and mm-hmm. and I, I, when that happened, I'm like, okay, I guess that's what Jedi can do. I don't know. I mean, to me, 
the the idea that we're going to start start looking for uh, a way to quantify something that's by design meant to be unquantifiable, it, even mm-hmm. if it's fictional reality, I, to me, it's like, wh- why dive down that rabbit hole? You know? Yeah, yeah, totally. totally. Uh, good point. Good point. And I think again, you know, I, I had put this all under the category of changes to the force that we see in this movie, which is, so yeah, Leia, quote unquote, uses the force, the, the like the force, arguably for the first time. Although there is that moment in End of Empire, we all know this, the escape from Bespin, where you know Cloud City, where where where, where they do communicate tele- telepathically, yeah. and that's how they find Luke well, and, dangling. And, and even in The Force Awakens, remember she senses Han Solo dying. Oh, mm. that's right. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's right. So I mean, so, one one assumes she's force sensitive, sensitive, of course, because of her family. She's just not adept uh, like her brother. And and to me, what happens to her in space is the equivalent of somebody who's drowning. Yeah. And you know, just whatever instinct they have in them to preserve their life kicks in. And and here we go. And 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 or by, the adrenaline the adrenaline rush and a, a mother picks up uh, the car off yeah, of right. the baby. You know and, that. And and by the way, one presumes that had she uh, uh, survived, uh, that would be something that would be carried forward into the next one. Interesting. Uh, unfortunately, since that opportunity will no longer be there, I'm glad that we did at least get to see her do this um, okay well i want to you know i want to come back to that point but really quickly uh, just just so again we, we kind of uh, check off certain things on my little anal uh, retentive little checklist here so what the, the other thing that we see in terms of that we haven't seen before with the force is this idea of two people of i guess astro people are calling it like astro astro tra- teleportation or something i don't know uh oh, sorry astro projection right yes. between yeah. The astral pro- projection that exists between Kylo Ren and uh, Ray. Now, I, I have to give my, my my other partner Brian Hall credit. He called it force texting, <laughs> <laughs> and I just love it because he's like, they're just like, "Hey, you up?" <laughs> 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 that is classic. That is great. That is great. Yeah, hat tip to Brian Hall there. Um, so yeah, so 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 they're force texting or or or, or astro projecting, and and uh, that's something we haven't seen. Okay, across the galaxy. Now we later get the reveal that you know Snoke is doing that so that so that Ray could play on Kylo Ren's weaknesses and Kylo Ren could play on Ray, Ray's weaknesses, mm. and that you know eventually Ray, that would lead to Ray coming. Or that you know that would lead to Kylo Ren delivering Ray to the Emperor. Oh, I'm sorry, Snoke. You know, yeah. <laughs> Snoke so, Patine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so that's that that that's sort of new. Um, we also obviously have now the ending, which of Luke in the third act and the in the in the lightsaber um, in the battle against Kylo Ren slash the whole First Order. Uh, that could be seen as a, as an extension of the same power, which is this idea of projecting oneself um across the galaxy but we also see in the case of uh of, of luke which they allude to earlier again right i think kylo ren makes a line that to to, to ray that you couldn't possibly be doing this by yourself yeah, the strain because would it kill would kill you, you. Yeah. the strain would kill you so right isn't it kylo ren shadowing it is yeah. very it's it's the whole chekhov's gun kind of thing right yeah. um so so then so then luke uses it and we know that that exhaustion leads leads to him you know, perhaps to his ultimate demise in the end. Yeah, I mean, he, uh, uh, I haven't settled on whether it's just, I mean, it's definitely shown as exhaustion um, um, in terms of, will? What it, you know, it's like uh, he has fulfilled yeah. whatever it is he needs to, and then he sees the two suns uh, in the horizon. Moment. Such, just, yeah, just like, I, a, you know, at the beginning. I, I, I watched, you know, the first time I saw, and I, I would imagine this is most people's reaction, it was the the first shock was like, oh, he's been on Arch 2 this whole time. Mm-hmm. And then you see the, the sunsets, you're like, oh, that's a nice callback. And then you see him disappear. And I think, uh, certainly for me, I was like, whoa, wait, what what did I just see, you know? Yeah, um, it's a lot. It's then, a lot. Yeah. And then the second time, the weight of it, like I knew what I was seeing. Mm-hmm. And and I think the way it's staged is so beautiful. You have oh, this, it's I like agree. this. You know, you see obviously the the music and the callback to the suns, but then you, you, we get this rear shot from the distance. You just see him disappear, yeah. and then his and then robe flies just away. floats away. And I was like, yeah. I was like, totally. that's I was like, that's the end of Luke Skywalker's journey, and yeah. it's in the context of we're not following his journey anymore. It's this, yeah. it's this about somebody else. And I was like, mm-hmm. you know, for me, I think what star Wars has become is 
it's it's a, a you know it's it's it was always a multi generational story, but it was always in the context of a father and a son. Now, mm-hmm. as we move further away from that, you to to me it drives home what's inevitable in life is that you know your story ends, but the mm-hmm. story goes on, mm-hmm. and that's just part well, of it, you know. Well, what I have myself wondering because Yoda appears in this one yeah. is. Uh, is Kylo Ren going to be visited by Anakin in the next one? Hmm. Right. I mean, that seems to be like where all of this would the, then the redeemed go. Anakin who wants to walk yes. off the ledge, maybe. Yeah, exactly. I, that's a, that's an interesting point, and I, and I wanted to come back to Leia, but okay, fine. Uh, quick point about Kylo Ren. Then I, I I think what this movie does, which the other movie, which Force Awakens, left perhaps open. Even after the death of, even after he kills his father, I thought that this movie more than more than even that, as if as if that alone wasn't enough, that this is a character that is beyond redemption. Mm-hmm. Yeah, his actions indicate otherwise. But I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, like, I think that because I think even even Ray, who in spite of having, you know, she calls him a monster, she reiterates the fact that she called him a monster again in this movie, and why she did so, and and why you know why did you kill your father, and and all that kind of things, right? All those things, even in spite of all of that, she still holds hope that there's still good in him, and she tells that to Luke, and then she she even tells that to Snoke when they have that 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 showdown. But I think that what what his actions right after and 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 what she sees in him at that point, she she realizes that okay he's beyond redemption. And then we have that moment where Luke visits uh, Leia and and basically tells Leia I can't save him and yeah, I'm not exactly. here to save him. Yeah. And then and then you know which is I'm here to. Well, or well, at least the audience thinks I'm here to kill him, which mm. uh, that's not why he's there, but that's how we interpret it. And then Leia says. I, you know, I, I've come to the, you know, I, I've come to realize, or I've, I've come to accept the fact that my son is no more. Yeah, yeah. So to well, me, she, she says he's gone, and then Luke says, uh, "Nobody's ever gone." Oh, interesting. Yeah. And, and, okay. I, and, and I love there's that works in multiple layers. But the way I took that, first of all, number one, I, I don't think the film is positioning us for a Kylo Ren redemption. I think if mm. I, I think this one specifically really reinforces yeah. that it's not headed in that direction. But I, yeah. I love the fact that. He he he. Luke tells Leia, you know, nobody's gone, and then he gives her, you know, the dice from from the the Falcon, calling back to Han Solo, yeah. and and I, I, there's a broader meta point here, right? Which is that, you know, like Han Solo is gone, but he's going to live again because we have a Han Solo movie coming, right? <laughs> and and there's there's a broader sense because to me, this entire film is a meta commentary on the Star Wars franchise, mm-hmm. which is yeah. the idea that characters come and go, but. No, uh, the truth is everyone lives forever because you know we we still talk about obi-wan kenobi in the present tense mm. even though he's been quote unquote dead for you know <laughs> totally and and but just a brief tangent here the 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 there's a moment where um the the the, char- the the character DJ played by Benicio del Toro he's he's showing yeah. Finn by the way this is like the pothole in the movie which I think they they needed to seriously trim but it was, it was like the the rat cars or whatever they were from yeah, the right. uh, I want to talk about every this. movie's yeah. got to have one yeah. but but so, so there's a moment there where he because we're talking about meta commentary and and um, Finn is like oh good guys bad guys you're one of, you were working for the bad guys but now you're working for the good guys and Benicio yeah. del Toro's like you know good guys bad guys look the people are making money. Yeah. Whether they're selling to the resistance or the, they're yeah. selling to the thing, it's uh, there's all about. It's just they the keeping the conflict going because that's how uh, they make money. I'm like he's basically talking about the Walt Disney Corporation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally, dude. Right? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yes. Right. Meta. Talk about that. Uh, I didn't. I didn't. See, okay. I, obviously, I I I read the obvious sort of anti-military, the military industrial complex. Uh, uh, it's changed to media cheap. industrial complex, but yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to say that again. The, the media industrial complex. Yeah, yeah, but I didn't even, I didn't think about the whole Disney Corp. Like, what do you think? Uh, yeah. The war can never end because the franchise needs to continue. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they basically, he, they literally met him at Disney World, right? Whatever that place was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good point. Good point. <laughs> So I just the, thought I, I don't know. It was, it, it was either Disney World or it was Harry Potter Land. I couldn't really tell. <laughs> uh, and I'll, I'll be honest. I mean, to me, and, I, and this is really again one of those things, really to, for me at least, quick to easy to dispel with because I didn't. I keep saying dispel, dispense with, which is I didn't enjoy. I, I to me that whole subplot of 
Although I like Rose as a new character, we don't maybe we don't need to necessarily go into all of it. But you know, and I and I and I and I didn't mind Finn's development and where he ends up. Um, I just thought that the whole Casino Planet and 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 uh, the Canto Blight, yeah, um, right? That yeah, Canto Blight. Okay, and even though I'm told that they filmed filmed it at physical locations, I think they went to Croatia and the scenes that we seen in the, the, the that we the scenes that we see in the streets as the animals are running through it, yeah. uh, it because it was so laden with CGI and everything else, the casino was so laden with CGI that it just took me right out of the movie. It was really. Yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't. Uh, I didn't mind it as much, and I think it's just because I assumed there was going to be something like this. Uh, what I, think. what I did appreciate was that yeah, it did add that element of the amusement park experience where you know you're loving this whole film, but then behind the scenes, yeah, there are people who are bought, who are selling these weapons, and then there's these animals that people are just totally abusing for their own entertainment. And and so what I liked about this, in contrast to the Rathcar scene in the previous film, hmm. was that at least here they threw in some commentary. Uh, I don't even know what was the purpose of the whole Rathcar thing in the previous film. But, uh, yeah, well, I mean, I th- I think uh, the 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 main purpose there, I would say, was to show how Han Solo hasn't lost a, a step where he's still like sure. to yeah. put one over on people and stuff. But yeah, man, that's yeah. that's the moment in Force Awakens where you're like, all right, let's just go ahead and chapter skip past this. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I, I think yeah. I think yeah. in in this, I mean, there we we get a view of the Star Wars universe we've never gotten before, which is yeah. how how are the, the people who are not caught up in this war and who are like not affected by it, how are mm-hmm. they living? You know. How does the one percent live in the Star Wars universe? So it's world building. There is a component yeah, of world, which there. is that's fine. It's just to me it, executed. I, I just thought it wasn't. It's like three well. times longer than it needs to be. Exactly. And exactly. and, and I, I, uh, I will say that that was like my my planned nap in in my second <laughs> viewing. Yeah, because I was really tired. Time to go to the bathroom, get some more popcorn, yeah, or a rest <laughs> break or a refill break. Exactly, exactly. I, I agree. I agree. I felt that way in the second one as well. My real disappointment with that scene was I got so excited that it was Justin Thoreau who used the whatever the the code breaker. Yes, not just Thoreau. Justin. Uh, oh yeah, no, sorry, Justin Thoreau. You're yeah, right. Yeah, because uh, I, I had just finally watched the Leftovers about about two months ago. And absolutely loved it, and and so because that I grew to love Justin Thoreau, and so when I saw him, I thought, oh, this is going to be excellent, and we just never see him again. Yeah, is it's, that... such a, it's such a bizarre, you know, yeah. this this irked me to no end because because the whole the whole thing with Maz Kanata, this is again, this is something Brian. Oh, that was so weird. It was, you know, this is this is <laughs> what Brian Hall said on my other show, but I need to say it because it's so perfect the way he summed it up. He's like, it's like a cut scene in a video game. Totally. Where totally. Some, somebody's yeah, like, exactly hey, I, I need you to do this. I can't help you right now because I'm fighting this thing here. Go do it. And then the level starts. <laughs> and then she's like, oh, he's – she says something really like um, – Sexual. Yeah, about him. Why would she not know his name? Yeah. Why would she be like, oh, he's going to have this little thing on it? What? what, what? Yeah. Like that's- it, It's bizarre and also um, – Oh, I I didn't even like the setup to how we get to Moscanada because if you know if you realize if you notice it's it's uh, it's Poe Dameron yeah. saying oh there's only one person who can you know who can give us the answer yeah, like here Finn should have done that Finn should have done that because I'm like wait, wait mm-hmm. they never established although one can obviously read behind the lines or read behind the scenes but there's no established connection between Poe Dameron right. and and, and Moscanada yeah this is true yeah. Yeah, yeah, and they did take time out for that to happen with other characters, like when Poe and Ray introduced themselves to each other at the right. end of the film. Yeah, that's true. When we yeah. look at it, at the end of the day, all of that, the whole subplot of what Rose and Finn are trying to accomplish, proves to be inconsequential yeah. because yeah, not only is the not only is the is the is the is is it subverted by or, or thwarted I should say sorry thwarted by you know Benicio del Toro a DJ turning on them in the end <laughs> but also it doesn't accomplish anything because yeah they're not able to fulfill they're not able to carry out the actual mission anyway they fail they fail um, what it does do is it it gives us time to establish Finn's arc which is this idea of and you know, Rose says the line in the end, which is, you know, you, you don't fight. What is it? You don't fight against what you what you, you don't. She's like, we you, don't don't hate, you, you don't kill what you hate. You save what, save, you, save what you love. Yeah, that was really I, nice. I think it's a great line. I think it's true. Yeah. You had the African American guy who connects with the Asian, the Asian woman. That's like uh, too common in pop culture right now. Of course, there's no <laughs> Africa, no Asia. 
Yeah. So, I mean, one thing I appreciated in a very corny way in terms of contemporary pop culture is that you have the African-American uh, connecting with, with the Asian, the African-American man connecting with the Asian woman, and then Poe is essentially a brown guy. I mean, he's from Guatemala. And then he's connected yeah. with Ray, so the brown guy with the white woman. So we still have all that. I mean, it's still basically a white universe. <laughs> yeah, true. yeah. Uh, I, I had somebody in the audience yell affirmative action when, when, <laughs> when they saw the <laughs> That's, you know, You know what's funny is, yeah. is yeah. there's a vocal contingent of people who are – upset at the mere concept of the character of roles. course uh, yeah uh, and and i'm like would would they be that way if she was a white character oh I, and i want to say this sorry real quick uh, yeah i agree Rizaki. great good good point we saw the same kind of reaction when finn you know was announced as a character and a stormtrooper and oh my god a black stormtrooper you know as if that somehow was not it was outside the realm of possibility um uh, Rose's the, the scene with Paige, Rose's sister, um, and I, and it kind of leads me to one of the things I did want to talk about also with the movie was, I think it was early on in the early uh, production phase where Ryan Johnson had talked about his inspiration or some one of his inspirations being old World War II movies. I think like mm -hmm. Battle of the Bulge, and I think we I think we kind of see it from the uh, from the opening space battle, which. Mm -hmm. I, I love that scene with Paige, and even though that character obviously is just sort of a, you know, just leads to it, it, it further develops Rose, and there's not much in that character per se. But the, the the scene with her and the bombers, and 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 the, and the way she's it's very tactile. She has to, you know, get the get the control down to her, and 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 the way she kicks the the I guess the ladder or whatever to do that. Mm -hmm. I, I love that whole setup and it was not only kind of the edge of your seat kind of moment, it was great at Ryan Johnson, which he does really well, which is the way he films action sequences. Um but also I I I, I love the kind of World War Two esque feelings of, of some of the space battles we see. Mm -hmm. uh, I yeah, guess I mean meets Battlestar Galactica, I think for those, if you've seen Battlestar Galactica season one and two, mm. you definitely see that play out too between the uh, First Order and the and the Resistance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, Zucky, I don't know if you had any thoughts on 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 that. Um, I I think the the whole sequence with the bombers is really interesting because that's that's again uh, something new, something we haven't seen before in this universe uh, as far as how combat is waged. I also think uh, structurally it's really interesting because that is the space battle for this film. Yeah, and they knock it out right up front, and the entire as opposed to being a big climactic battle. Yeah. Exactly, you know, and and in in many ways, I mean, you know, I talked earlier about how people were expecting this to, uh, they were cr criticizing it in advance for probably being a ripoff of Empire Strikes Back, and then were upset afterwards for not being enough of a ripoff of Empire Strikes Back. It's very, you know. Uh, I can see why George Lucas retired. Can I just say, yeah. <laughs> like, who needs this in his life? You know, but yeah. but I, I actually liked that, and I liked because um, we've sort of danced around it. Uh, the whole arc that that Poe Dameron gets in this film, yes. uh, and it, number one, it really makes Talk up for we, we it makes up for lost time because we got basically nothing uh, with him substantial in the first film. Um, mm. But here, uh, he's set up to be. Uh, a reinforcement of sort of the 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 fly by the seat of his pants does things his own way flyboy hotshot, and the whole movie basically deconstructs that and says this guy's an, this guy's an idiot. He should have been mm -hmm. following orders. Uh, he should have trusted people uh, who know better than him, and he didn't. And and mm -hmm. a lot of people died as a result of that. And I I like that the movie went there, and the movie ultimately had his entire. You know, mission in the middle, middle uh, third, fail. You're right. Yeah, which is the like his mission, as in the mutiny, the whole mutiny, and it, sending Finn and Rose off for the, what? What is not just uh, uh, pointless in in the plot construction, but it it ends up being utterly uh, uh, meaningless in that uh, it, that mission arguably leads to even more uh, resistance fighters dying. That's a good point. That's a good point, right? And 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 if, had, had he trusted what, what's Laura Dern's character's name, General a Admiral Holdo? A Admiral Holdo. Had, had had he had he deferred to her leadership, then her plan, which was not not to quote unquote just escape or cowardice, as he accuses her, but rather to reestablish this base on the planet of Crate. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I, great point. Great point. Uh, <laughs> and I agree. I the, we we see a little arc for him as well uh, here that we don't really get to see much of in the uh, in the Force Awakens. Um, I, I wanted to quickly, you know, we we talked about it, and you know, we talked about that opening battle scene. One of the other things that I think have and this becomes a point of consternation, but then again, what doesn't among fans or among, uh, you know, even audience, audience, uh, you know, viewing the movie, which is um, the humor, the humor. And in, in, this is a funny Star Wars movie. But oh, yeah. The, the, the voicemail call at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I thought that was hilarious. Did you but did you guys feel like the humor was a little too much? Was it was it was it? Do we, we miss out on certain moments because of the humor? Um. Uh, I think all of uh, all of the films had goofy humor moments. You know, laugh it up, fuzzball, get this walking carpet out of my way, right? They had all kinds of goofy lines like that. And the previous film also did that, right? Where where Poe first meets Kylo Ren, and they're quiet, and then Poe is saying, you know, so do I talk first? Yeah, or do you talk first? Yeah, exactly. This I thought was more funny. Yeah, but, but this this was of a piece with that. I mean, I, I it's, it was it was it's, of a piece with that. I, I, I saw that too, right? Yeah. You know, it's and and not just that. I think it it what it also does is it illuminates the kind of windbag that General Hux is. Yeah, because you know, <laughs> he does further. his yeah. his kind of uh, uh, this haughty speech, which is just a bunch of hot air. Um, I think it it shows how these are these are these are these are the Star Wars equivalent of Tiki Torch Nazis. Yeah, they are. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because even even now, Supreme Leader Kylo Ren is this unhinged, you know, uh, yeah, uh, you know, former cosplay yeah, character, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's funny about the cosplay because Snoke Snoke actually uh, uh, taunts him about the helmet and take off that silly helmet, right? Yep. Yeah. Which I thought what was. What do you think you're doing? Yeah, yeah. It was really funny because again. Um, interesting because, uh, it, you know, I think, yeah, we felt that in Force Awakens, and here again, you know, Ryan Johnson is is just calling is 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 calling attention to it and kind of embracing that idea of this being foolish and not mm-hmm. kind of you know going with it in in terms of the mythology of it. I, mm-hmm. I enjoy, yeah, I, I like that as well, Zucky. You're right. You're right. Um, yeah, even even I mean I'm I'm remembering more of of Hux's funny lines where like you know he says you know the supreme leader's dead and then Kylo Ren starts choking him he goes long live the supreme leader <laughs> yeah 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 Which, well let me ask you guys this though because we do see something in the end when 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 Kylo Ren returns after being sort of dejected and defeated by Luke Skywalker or or his yeah. you know yeah that whole that 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 whole uh, battle. Uh, and he's and he's let the rebels escape, and he's failed utterly. Right? Yeah. Uh, Hux gives him this look. So, do do you think we're leading into maybe some actual character development or something with Hux that we haven't seen so far? Because if, if we talk about major characters or at least recurring characters from the first movie to the, to this one, I would say Phasma and him. Well, Phasma's over, but you know, and Phasma kind of for me was this trilogy's Boba Fett. You know, this really cool yeah, character true. that <laughs> ends up being nothing, uh, and, and and a fan favorite. But let's say Hux is still here and remains. Uh, do we maybe see more of Hux and maybe see some development there with that idea of him, of him kind of questioning whether or not you know Kylo Ren Kylo Kylo Ren is is really fit to be in command, as it were. Well, I mean, he was definitely the rivalry's been there since the oh, yeah. first scene of the, of the last film, right? And then even when, when uh, Kylo Ren is on the ground after the whole thing with Snoke, yeah. um, then Hux, you know, slowly starts pulling out his blaster. Right. And, I thought that was right. so interesting, yeah. 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 And then he puts it away. So, yeah, <laughs> I, think, I think we're... Right, right. <laughs> yeah. I think we are, we are waiting for, for something more to happen there. Maybe he'll join, like, the, the, the Jedi... Because I mean, he keeps getting irritated that that's not, uh, that uh, Kylo Ren is trying to control his army. Yeah, yeah. There's and definitely so, some territoriality. I mean, to me, it's very, very kind of akin to like a sibling rivalry we see between yeah. the two. And or like, as who has the pleasure of the father, like the parent, you know, um, or in that in this case, Snoke, right? Um, I, mean, I mentioned like like you know, he probably feels what it felt like to work for Steve Jobs, you know, during during the piece of. Of all That's... the iPods and stuff, you know, Steve Jobs had that reputation for for being a really, really tyrannical leader. And Interesting. Then Interesting. Hux is getting ready to just take him out. You know. huh. 
Um, You're mean to me. Yeah. 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 Um, So I guess, I mean, I I don't know. I know we've covered a lot of ground. uh, We haven't talked about about Ray's parentage. Yeah. Yeah. Or the kids. Yeah, I want to talk about the kids. And so maybe, why don't we do Ray's first? Because I think I I want to bring up the kids and and, and the ending. The ending ending. Like the last and final shot you see in the movie. So, yeah, Ray's, I, I guess Ray, all the theories and theorizing for the last two years and the about about Ray's uh, lineage and parentage is sort of very again uh, you know dispensed with really rather quickly where uh, Ray uh, you know uh, Kyle Ren tells her that you know what essentially your parents are nobodies and if you search your feelings you know this to be true or he has her kind of confess that line which is they were nobody yeah yeah throughout the film he keeps saying say it. Serious. Yeah, yeah, say it, say it. And, and then he has that amazing – again, I, I thought – and maybe we should talk about like the writing I thought was just – there were some lines which were so – again, not what you expect in a Star Wars movie, but just really great writing where he, he, he says uh, – what does he say? They were nobodies that sold you off for drinking money, yeah. and, they're, and they're buried in a pauper's grave in the yeah, Jakku. Yeah. Also oh, good, like, yeah. Talk about – Biting, you know what I mean? Talk about yeah. biting, sort of. Uh, yeah, yeah. The way he he says that to her. Um, now I know I've read this on the uh, online again, and this is again going back to the idea of fans will never give up theorizing. But oh, it's 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 Kylo Ren telling her, and maybe you know he's sort of lying to her, and and mm-hmm. I don't buy it because you know no. Ray accepts. Ray is the one who sort of confesses that line. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, we can, if we really want to take it in that direction, we can argue that she doesn't like nod or anything. She's just tears are coming out of her eyes, huh. right? Yeah. But no, I think I think that's probably what the actual story is. And yeah. and I think it goes, it fits in very well. And we, now we can, I think it's it's a good time to raise or talk about the children as well, which I think it takes us to where Ryan Johnson wants to go with the Force, which is breaking the tandem between. Uh, the force and a bloodline the force and the skywalker lineage or dynasty yeah. and also sort of making the force um egalitarian or something that is uh, more of a merit maybe not a meritocracy but you know again the force is egalitarian anybody can tap into it uh mm-hmm. if they have, if they're able to um so it's no longer list limited to ahl al-bayt yeah. so, <laughs> right. wow the of course i saw that yeah. parallel as well uh, Zeki, I think you 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 agree. I think that's really that was very intentional on the part of Ryan Johnson and where he wants to take not only I think this trilogy but maybe even the new trilogy that he's been tasked to work on. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't I don't know if if, if that ending is is meant to direction uh, signal direction of of where he's headed, but I think um, what it what it's what it's trying to do is undo in story the the effects of of what the prequels did which was really to limit um mm-hmm. what it what the concept of of of, of being a jedi knight is right mm-hmm. um, because because before the prequels the you know the jedi were an ideal right and mm-hmm. it wasn't something we saw actualized and then when you see the actual jedi in practice you're kind of like oh geez you know <laughs> i don't know about these guys you know i i've, I've mentioned this before but like the I draw a parallel with in this film, right? We see we see Ben Solo's memory of his uncle almost killing him, hmm. and then we see Luke's pers- the Rashomon Luke's yeah, perspective, totally. which is yeah. I contemplated it for a second, and then I was horrified that I even contemplated it. Right? So mm-hmm. it's this it's this misunderstanding that spun the whole galaxy out of orbit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like that. I and, like that. And yeah. I draw a yeah. parallel there, right? Because Luke stopped himself because he's like, "This uh-huh. is not what we do." And in in Revenge of the Sith, um, Mace Windu has confronted Palpatine, and he's about to mm-hmm. kill him. And Anakin yeah. rushes in, and he has a, Mace Windu has a lightsaber held up, and Anakin's like, "Stop! That's not the Jedi way." Exactly. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And and at that moment, if Mace Windu would have stopped himself, he could have saved the Republic. Yeah. Right, and, all within two seconds. Yeah, you know, and and it's it's these these small decisions in a split second that end up having major ramifications. Mm-hmm. And so, I think this film is very much a critique of 
our own perceptions of that. And I think it's a it's because that little boy at the end is all of us, right? Those little kids at the end who are like, and then Luke Skywalker did this, and this. that's all of us who've played with Star Wars toys for forty years. Totally, totally. Yeah. And and by the way, w- tying back to Luke, I think that's what's so important is that th- the first thing he like Ray is like, come come save the universe, right? Again, she's us. We're like, hey, Luke Skywalker, do what we're what we've imagined you doing for thirty years. <laughs> <laughs> and he and what is he? Think? He's like, what do you think I'm going to do? I'm going to walk out there with my laser sword and take on the whole first order. And he could not physically do that, but that's mm-hmm. what he needed to do mm-hmm. for the. You know, I love I love his his the last thing he says to Kylo Ren. Right? He's like, uh, you know, the the rebellion has been reborn. Yeah. And the spark had gone out. He was the mm-hmm. spark. So in other words, he mm-hmm. sacrificed himself to relight the rebellion. Mm-hmm. That's right. Which is. I, again, talk about Luke's ending, which you know, one of the uh, you know w- w- that dialogue exchange between him and Kylo Ren, where he tells where, where Kylo Ren tells him what he's going to do, he's going to kill him, and then he's going to kill the he's going to defeat the uh, d- destroy the rebellion or the resistance, and then Luke responds with the same line he tells Ray at yeah. the beginning, which is everything in that sentence is wrong. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> and then he, and then he tells him why, which is that. You know, um, you, what, what does he say, Zucky, in, what, in the order? Um, he, he says, uh, the resistance is reborn. The, the war, war is just beginning. Just begun. Yeah. yeah. And, I will, not, and, I, will and not, I will not be the last Jedi. And I will not be the last Jedi, yeah. That's right. That's yeah, right. That's I, that cool. is great. Now, okay, I want uh, – seeking your, y'all's inter- – you know, both of you, you guys' interpretations uh, on this line then, which is what he tells Lu- – what, what, what he tells Kylo Ren – that if you strike me down in your anger, I will, I, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll basically haunt you like your father. Mm-hmm. What does he mean? Because we don't really see Han Solo haunting no, Kylo. He, he, he means the guilt, right? He he spared. Yeah, I think it's you know, he doesn't yes. mean like a force ghost, but I, he spared him the the guilt because Kylo is still bearing the guilt of what happened, and we know he's still mm-hmm. bearing the guilt because he holds back from from killing Leia. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Because what I thought was interesting was then one of the other then the then the line he says the very last line he he tells Kylo Ren which yeah, is see you, around, see you around later or is you know see, see you later kid yeah, yeah. Uh, I thought was so reminiscent of Han more than a mm-hmm. Luke line mm-hmm. oh, yeah yeah totally. that's a good point yeah, nice point I I also saw that as like I felt like he was channeling Han more than mm-hmm. he was channeling himself I I also saw that yeah. as as it's Luke Luke knows that his time is is almost up. Mm. I like this this Han point. I think yeah, that's totally Han language. It is. It is very. Yeah, I thought it very Han language, and I I, I thought, yeah. and knowing as exact as Ryan Johnson has been throughout the movie, um, you know, I, I just thought it was really. And and yeah. by the way, you know, it's that's, funny because because one critique people have had is like, how come Luke waits until the very end to come and do that? And 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 I think what maybe the movie isn't as clear as it could be, but he, Luke is cut off from the Force, mm-hmm. and and they make yeah. and and you know. They say, you know, Ray says, like, "Oh, I didn't see you in my vision. You've been cut off." But mm-hmm. even before that, uh, when he sees Chewie, he's like, "Where's Han?" Yeah, yeah he I agree. Know. He doesn't know. Yeah. Right? He doesn't know. Which, because I thought, it, or one of the again theories that I had in my mind was just w- 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 is that he know he he senses that Han dies in Force Awakens, and that's why he activates quote unquote R two D two. Mm. Like it was actually okay. he he who had put it was it was Luke Luke had put R two D two in some sort of low power mode or whatever and, and to hide his whereabouts uh, and that you know because there's no explanation right and this was this has been again one of those points that I know fans have pointed out or, or, or criti- critics have pointed out about how R two D two just kind of randomly wakes up in the third act to reveal that's, that's the J J X Machina. There you yeah. go. It is the JJ X Machina. You're very right. Yeah, it's great point. Great point. Yeah. Uh, Speaking of that, I, I did love when he when they get reunited in this film, and then R two D two to to get Luke uh, inspired or whatever. He plays the Leia video. Loved it. I yeah, loved that was it. Awesome. I, you know, and I want to I want to talk about that. And maybe we can kind of start wrapping up with this, which is uh, what I what I did appreciate as a lifelong fan, as someone who. You know, grew up with this with the original trilogy. Is that um, you know the the icons were there, the iconography was there, and it was handled properly. Uh, and 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 although 
I would have loved to from a from a, from the perspective of a ten year old or a eight year old who grew up watching these movies, or or, the, or when I, the age I was when these movies released. I would have loved to have seen more interplay between Luke and R2-D2. Uh -huh. uh, and all I get is that one scene. I would have loved to have seen more interplay between Luke and Chewie. And all I got was maybe a couple of scenes. And, and, or, or, and same thing with Leia and Luke. And Luke and C-3PO. And I can go on and on and on. But mm -hmm. what I loved is, is that we do get those moments. There is those yeah. moments of, to Zucky's point, going back to that feeling of, 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 of real loss at the end and sadness, uh, Zucky. You know, and I texted you this after I watched it the second time, which is it, it, in many ways it's like saying goodbye to an old friend mm -hmm. or, or or having an old or someone close to you pass on. Because while you 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 believe and you know in your heart that they're in a better place, uh, there are the memories, there is the past, and, and so there's the past that you have to enjoy and to relive and to and to memorialize them with. But yet there's also the uncertainty of, well, what does the future hold? Like, how do I go on without the presence of this person in my life? And, and I, I, you know, I don't mean to get all, you know, but, no, but I, I, mean, I as someone it's entirely apt. Okay, thank you. And, and I, as someone who I, I unabashedly feels that way about Star Wars, um, it, it's a very real emotion. And Omer, I mean, you kind of oh, being totally. in, in my camp, right, as someone who yeah. saw these at a very young age and, and, and grew up with them, um, didn't you have that same feeling? Oh, totally. I mean, I remembered as this film was ending how I felt uh, walking out of Revenge of the Sith that, okay, this thing that has been such a large portion of my brain, I can finally let go. Uh -huh. And I remember walking out of Revenge of the Sith just very, very grateful, you know, for having had that whole journey, which at that time was, what, two decades? Yeah. And 78, 80, you know, three decades. And so, sorry, math. But, yeah. um, but then, uh, that, but I also had wanted to, to let go of Star Wars, but then, you know, uh, people on Facebook would post, here's a Star Wars phone cover, here's a Star Wars mouse. <laughs> like, I don't want to see any of this. Yeah. And the movie started yeah. coming back. But with this film, I kind of felt like, okay, now I can finally say goodbye to all this, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And I mean, yeah, I mean, speaking even like in the way that all of us are these characters, especially Luke or even, you know, Darth through so many parts of our lives, like even, you know, if we connect this with the last time I was on your show that I've pulled away from all community work except for, you know, the stuff I do at Loyola and an occasional talk here and there. Like I just want to literally stay, stay in my office at work all day long, uh, every day of the week. And just get away from everything because part of me is just like, I can't, I can't do this community work anymore. And then I have these students that have gone in these bad directions. And I think each and every one of us has those moments where we connect to these characters. Like literally the, the, like two hours before I went to see Star Wars, I was talking to a friend of mine who, who was trying to get me to work on this or that. And I told her, yeah, I just don't want to be involved with, with human beings anymore right now. I just wow. really want to stay away from everything. You want to find matter. your own own little oct was it oct two oct two yeah, yeah whatever that is yeah, yeah. you know look pretty cool wow. and live with a yeah. bunch of nuns that look like et yeah <laughs> nuns yeah. that look like et <laughs> well, speaking of like callbacks to spielberg um someone else pointed this out but but uh, uh the the uh, master code code cracker uh justin uh justin Thoreau. Thoreau. yeah uh, wearing the white tuxedo was that was that Indiana Jones uh, Temple of Doom? Did anybody? There is uh, maybe read. Oh, interesting. Because I was thinking of uh, I was definitely thinking of Indiana Jones watching the trailer for the new Jurassic Park movie, where Chris Pratt is shouting "Run, run!" right when the uh, the the oh uh, the volcano is bursting. But yeah, I think you also uh, this is this is probably uh, a bit of Spielberg right there in that scene too. Yeah, I didn't think about that. So. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, uh, well, I mean, there, there's a lot of those kind of Easter eggs. I think uh, that maybe uh, you know, there, there's. I'm sure there's going to be umpteen articles between now and <laughs> in the upcoming weeks where they go back and look at all the various Easter eggs. So we don't need to necessarily get into all the <laughs> details. Um, I guess finally, um, w where does the franchise go from here? So now we know that 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 it's going to be back in J.J. Abrams' hands. Uh -huh. Who is arguably a very different filmmaker than Ryan Johnson? Um, so I think Zucky, picking up with you because this is probably something maybe you and you've already unpacked. Well, you know, discussing this with uh, Brian and on your other podcast. 
like where does where, where does Disney take the franchise now? Like where does Kathleen Kennedy and 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 where do we where do we expect this to go with J.J. Abrams? I you know I don't know, and I love not knowing. I love I yeah. love that this movie ends, and I'm like, uh, yeah, what's going to happen? No idea. I I don't know what what here what they've said is they intend uh, episode nine to be a culmination of all three trilogies. Yeah. However, okay, see, the little tidbits like that I didn't know. So, okay, great. So, ho- however, that being yeah. said, uh, yeah. Bob Iger said that J.J. Abrams pitched him the story of Episode Nine like two days ago. Yes, I heard that too. I so, read that online. Is that yeah, true? Okay, so that that, is yeah. true. So in other words, yeah. nobody knows anything is what that means. Mm-hmm. So he pitched this idea, you think, and he's pitching this idea after he himself has probably seen the final cut of, uh, of, Last, of Last Jedi? Well, I, mean, I think he, that, has a, to, that has to be the case. But but he I mean he's a producer so I mean he yeah. he was aware of what they were doing I think I think what I think I have to imagine that he he looked at last jet where the last Jedi left off and he was probably relieved that he didn't have to wrap it up you know and then and then obviously all the behind the scenes shenanigans happens and he's probably like okay. Uh, let's figure this out, you know. So that's probably he's right. definitely got the most uh, unenviable job in the galaxy. Yeah, it's, and it's it's you know what we need to know going in that it's going to be unsatisfying on some level. Exactly, it just is. I mean, yeah, I mean, look, course. you know, uh, uh, it's it is it it was unen unenviable when he did Force Awakens. It's going to be unenviable again, uh, you know. But I I I'm excited, and I uh, I know that. The Star Wars that I grew up with is is done. It's over. Yeah. You know, so so going to to what Omar was saying about sort of letting go, that's just yeah. one of those things that you need to know. Like if you are expecting these sequels to be the further adventures of Luke Skywalker and company, well, this this one has disabused you of that notion. Mm-hmm. And 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 I, I said this earlier, but I think that's part of the rationale behind uh, removing Luke Skywalker from from the the playing field. Mm-hmm. Well. Yeah, and I, I, okay. I, I want to just—I know what we said we we're going to wrap with this, but a quick or two quick points that I wanted to talk to you guys about. One was that remember we, we talked about that end scene. So with the with the with the child and and uh, back on um, that casino planet. Uh, what was it again? Uh, uh, Disney World. Dubai. <laughs> Canto bite. Canto bite. Thank you. Does he use the force to move the broom? And and yes. whether whether he does, oh, he does. Okay. Yes. And so you've got these kids; they're playing with action figures, arguably, yes. and and kind of reliving the mythology the way we did when we were kids. Uh, and so now the and you've got one of them, Elise, who goes off, and he is he is force sensitive. Um, I would have, and I said this to you know the, to the I think I said this to you, Zucky, on which was my second first viewing, your second. Which was like that would have been a great ending for the whole trilogy, like to end with that. Like, yeah. but this film did feel like that. It yeah, well, certainly like that. Scene, yeah. It was an end to the Star Wars that we've known. Interesting, yeah. right? Yeah. And, but and, but and, how do you say that, knowing though? So, okay, well, because I what I see happening in the third film, well, well, you have to deal with Leia in some way. I don't think you deal with Leia. Or Leia's death, i.e., Carrie Fisher's death, in, you know, in the opening crawl only. I think you either begin the movie with a funeral, yeah. and 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 that funeral serves as a way of galvanizing the the that distress signal that they've sent out at the end of this one, that remains unanswered at the end of this one. Cool. Um, I think that people then re- start responding in droves because Leia has died. Mm. And Leia That's certainly cool. dies off screen. Like, i.e., I think Disney has said they're not going to CGI her. And even mm-hmm. if that's true, that's fine. You can say that she died heroically in battle, or she died of of just old old age. But I think you mentioned that, and then you you can show a funeral, and you don't you can do a closed casket. You can maybe just CGI a distant Leia's body in a funeral. Uh, but I see that as maybe this point of like de- you know galvanizing all of the all the people in the outer rim and the farther reaches of the galaxy who've, who will now come and join the resistance, and then maybe we also see Lando Lando, mm. as in Billy D. Williams, Colt Forty Five. Yeah, comes back. back. Yeah. yeah, because you still have Chewie, you still have the Millennium Falcon, and you've got yeah. the droids. So I mean, so because I, I was trying to take inventory of what's left of my. <laughs> Of my, you know, of my Star Wars, um, and and although <laughs> Leia is left in the movie, Carrie Fisher is no longer with us, and although Luke is no longer in the movie, Mark Hamill remains with us. 
um, as does you know Harrison Ford, and you know mm-hmm. give him God give him a long <laughs> give these guys long lives. <laughs> I'm not wishing or, or you know wanting to open any of that, but so was, I don't know. What, what do you think, Zucky, in well, terms of my I, prediction? No more two. Yeah. I, I I think that um, all of that is possible, but I wouldn't hold out for it. I think there will be callbacks to some extent, but. I think the 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 thrust of the story has moved on, and I think I mean really, mm-hmm. that's that's why you remove Luke from 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 being an active participant. I think we'll see him as a Force spirit, but yeah, well. I you know I I th- once you become a Force spirit, you you impact the story in a different way. Yeah, and Peter. as as long as, let me put this way, as long as Luke is alive, even if he's over there on Arch two, then you're unconsciously waiting for him to come in and save the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. And they, right. they, you can't, you can't do that. If 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 this trilogy is not Luke's story, Luke's story is finished. Yeah. Um, the same way, you know, this this the original trilogy was not Ben Kenobi's story. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe my, my my wishful thinking of seeing Billy D. Williams. Uh, I mean, <laughs> you know, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna see Lando. Yeah, it's we're gonna, just, it's the old is the old fan in me. We're again. we're just a few months away from seeing Lando again. Yeah, this is true. Yeah, right. Agreed. Which I think again, I you know, like for example, and you mentioned the dice, but the dice never. I forget. Frankly, I never. They weren't even on my radar. And I remember Zucky, I asked you after yeah. my first meeting, which is. Like, hey, I don't, I don't even remember noticing this. I the, the, like the dice, but I've, I've since forth gone back and I've checked out New Hope and Lo and Behold. There, there they are. Yep. There they are. But there's no mention of them. There's no, there's no reference to them whatsoever in, the, in the original three. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, except a role here, and I think that's Disney's way of certainly teasing the solo movie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, is you think they but you think that they put that in there as a way of intentionally doing that or you think Ryan Johnson sort of intended that to be I, the case I think Ryan the, Johnson's enough of a fan that he knows the significance of those dice yeah. wow. uh, it, it wasn't like hey coming soon it wasn't like that but I, I think you uh-huh. will see them again there's no question because if those are the dice he won the Millennium Falcon with then of course they're going to be in that movie yeah. it's not a Marvel post credit yeah scene. it's not you know if it was a Marvel post credit scene, we would see Mace Windu uh, show up and ask yeah. Ray to join the the Avengers. Or something. Yeah, they're, they're even like shawarma together. Yeah, uh, that's right. Yeah. They're eating shawarma together. That's right. Uh, yeah, even I mean, like watching the it's the adult in me that watching the seven and eight, uh, probably every scene I would still look at it as a business too, right? And so just like we're saying, like those those yeah. dice. Uh, it is a Disney business investment in that one second. And so uh, episode nine, yeah, is going to be a completion of this trilogy, perhaps a completion of the nine films. And it's also going to be opening the door wide open for the, the rest of the Star Wars universe. Right. How? That'll be the fun part to wait and see. Mm. And that's a good place to leave this conversation. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, oh, by the way, I'm, I'm really upset that Am- Admiral Akbar died. He was like the only Muslim in the whole thing. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, well, Riz, Riz Ahmed died in the previous one. Oh yeah, true, true. Yeah, Admiral yeah. Akbar dies. Yeah, um, you know, well, uh, Zucky, sorry. I, I know, I, I know. We keep this is belabored. This is becoming okay. one of those You're like, like Disney. <laughs> I'm George Lucas here. I wrapped up the saga. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was gonna say this is akin to one of those like Heather body, like 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 you know when the party ends and people are leaving. It, you know, yeah, you just stand and, stand around the doorway. Heather body, goodbye. Talk. Yeah, you, you stand and talk by the doorway for another hour and a half. Um, when did you guys know that Luke was hologramming it or whatever you want to call it? Like, you know, well, um, uh, Astro- I kept getting distracted Astro- by his horrible makeup. I was like, why did he just dye his hair and why did he do it so poorly? Is he that vain? And, <laughs> and yeah, I mean, I thought, this is just so weird. But it did not occur to me that yeah, he was a hologram. Just I just thought. I, I was like, just... oh, he got a haircut and I guess hey. he dyed his yeah. beard. That's well, I did too. Umar, and you'll appreciate this. You know what? I, I, I swear to God, the first thing I thought of when I saw that was it was akin to how we read descriptions of, like, you know, in, in Muslim uh, tradition of. You know the prophet and the companions putting on like like the uh, like the kohol, right? The, the kohol, uh, yeah, exactly. The masker before <laughs> before battle as a way of of sort of uh, cool. you know, imposing imposing fear, right? So anyway, um, yeah, I, I thought maybe hey, you know that's why he it, it's not vanity, it's it's him it's him being battle ready. Mm, mm. <laughs> so yeah. and then he also looks he looked leaner, like I thought, wow, like yeah. he lost. Wait, <laughs> like he's, actually, yeah, that was he's in battle shape. He's in Return of the Jedi shape. 
Yeah, I kept getting distracted because it always seemed like his head was disproportionately too large it was. for his body. And then when he was facing um, Kylo Ren, he just seemed remarkably small. Yeah, you know, you, you, you're right. You're right. And they certainly did the whole Matrix, like, well, like, wait, there's no way Luke is moving like this at this age. But then, you know, to me, again, it was all dismissive. You can all kind of wrap it up as well. He's just so strong. He's emerged now so powerful with the Force that he's able to take on those blasters. He's able to take on lightsabers, and, and he's impervious to all of it. Uh, but... Uh, and people have talked about how there's, you know, he doesn't leave those, uh, like the, uh, like the salt footprints, like the, uh, like as he's sliding the way Kylo Ren does. And and the, you know, Ryan Johnson even makes it a point, which I noticed on the second viewing, of of kind of showing that where you know, a, a, as he's sliding, you know, um, you can see the, you, you you can see the marks in the footprints. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was the, there, there. There's a lot of, I mean, it's it's very sixth sense where you can, you all the clues are there. Yeah. Um, but I mean, we are uh, Kylo Ren in that instance. You know, I mean, yeah, he, totally. he's he's so uh, blinded by emotion. In his case, rage. In our case, joy. Yeah, that we don't, uh, we don't right. see what's right in front of us. Yeah. So so well put, Zucky. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think okay. Well, thank you. I, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, well, once again, we 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 discussed another Star Wars movie. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, Omer. Thanks for taking oh, time to join. Always us. appreciate being back with you guys. I appreciate uh, it. Well, thank I'm, I'm you. I'm glad thank we've you. got this tradition. Yeah, I like it. And I guess what? We'll be back here same same bat time, same bat chattel when. Uh, well, when does uh, Solo come out? Well, is that it's, it's scheduled for May, but we haven't Yeah, they're first shifting to May, right? Well, yeah. It's th- that one is supposed to come out in May, but we've seen neither hide nor hair of anything from that movie, so I'm actually, is true. I'm curious yeah. if if they end up uh, shifting the release date, but uh, interesting cuz uh, they've wrapped though, right? I mean, according yeah, to Ryan, done. I think yeah, it's, it's done. Right. So we shall see. When is uh, when's Avengers if Infinity War and Jurassic Park? When are they all coming out? Uh, Avengers is May, first week of May. Uh, uh, Han Solo is, I believe, the, uh, Memorial Day, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And Jurassic is, uh, that's a good question. I don't know. June. And then it's Wrinkle of Time, Wrinkle in Time part of that period, too? Because I would be Wrinkle in Time is like February or March, I believe. So, so Jurassic yeah. World. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, J- Jurassic World. Is coming out. Let me find this. You know, you know, it's funny, Omar. June, you're, 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 you're talking. Yeah, I, I, that's what I said. June. I think June, and one of I think June twenty second, or that's one of them is coming out. Right. June 22nd. Yeah, um, and it's funny because you you brought up all these movies, and I'm like, okay, this is an interesting way to wrap. But I'm like, well, oh, wait, hello, it's all it's all Mouse House. So you're right. <laughs> Disney owns <laughs> all of us. Oh. Oh, what was it, Zucky? Uh, we will. We're all going to become wholly owned subsidiaries of Disney. We just don't. We, it's just a matter it's of time. It's just a matter of time. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yes, that was very sweet. We're obviously talking about it, uh, or, or we're, we're, we're saying this obviously in reference to the fact that Disney and has just bought 20th Century Fox as well. So. Yep. Um, but uh, well, thank you guys again, and uh, yeah, we'll be back. I guess whenever they end up releasing Solo, hopefully that is May of uh, of twenty eighteen. Um, I guess that remains TBD. But uh, thank you as always for uh, joining us. Um, uh, oh, yeah. I guess Omer, where can people find you? Your writings? Are you going to do a movie review of this on? Yeah, I, I, I hope to time? to uh, spend this this winter break to to get back into writing, starting with an essay on this film. Um, to talk about the mythology of it. Maybe I'll just nice. steal some of the things you guys said and not give you credit. We'll see. I <laughs> <laughs> oh, love that. <laughs> Whether you give us credit or not, but thank you. That would be, that would, I would I would look forward to reading that. That would be great. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Zucky, uh, you want to tell us where people can find you and where people can find us and, and reach us and contact us? Yeah, well, you can find me at my website, zuckyscorner.com, Z-A-K-I-S corner. That's also my Twitter and my Instagram. You can find us at uh, facebook.com slash diffusecongruence or you can email us at diffusecongruence at gmail.com we look forward to hearing your questions or comments you can also leave a review for the show at iTunes uh, as well as a star rating so please uh, do that if you're liking what we're doing Absolutely, and and I think uh, this is probably going to be our last show for the new year, before the new year. So I guess or an early happy new years to our listeners, and uh, we're, we're, you probably won't see an episode drop until the following year. But uh, thank you as always for listening, and this would be a great time for you to reach out, and we'd love to hear your thoughts. And we have a, 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 a I don't want to tease too much, but we've got a great show lined up for January, and we always like to kick off the new year with with a big guest, and I think we were able to 
do that this time around as well. So do do stay tuned for that. And uh, as always, thank you for listening and thank you for joining us. 